Hello YouTube, this is Ian Prepper and today is August 4th and as you know the stock market um, dropped more than 500 points. Uh, you saw silver and gold kind of take a big hit as well. Um, so not a good day overall but what I want to talk about real quick is I want to talk about Russia and I want to talk about China and then their impact on silver and, and why it's even even more important now to own silver than ever before. Uh, Reuters ran a, an article and it was on Putin. Um, as you know, he's probably going to be running there for president of Russia again. Uh, he's definitely in cahoots with the number, uh, with the current president, so uh, he has a lot of influence on the country. But it was interesting. Uh, Putin, you know, he he told a, a crowd of students that you know the United States is, is living like parasites on the global economy and. Um, basically what he was saying was that the dollar dominance was a threat to the financial markets and I want to quote Putin here they have it in quotes it, he says they are living beyond their means and shifting a part of their weight of their problems to the world economy they are living like parasites off the global economy and their monopoly of the dollar now what is interesting is even though Putin was criticizing the United States a significant portion of Russia's uh, money is tied up in American reserves and, Obviously, American reserves, even though it, the dollar is devalued, not worth a whole lot, is still a much more secure investment than uh, the other options they have. So, point of this article is just to let you know that Russia, uh, they're looking for other alternative sources uh, where they can invest their money, and they're questioning the value of the dollar. Now, China. Let's talk about China real quick. Um, even though we avoided um, a, a debt, in other words, we, we increased the debt ceiling. Uh, China actually downgraded the U.S. sovereign debt. Now, it's called the Daigong Global Credit Company, and it lowered our rating to uh, A-plus last November, and that was basically after the U.S. Federal Reserve decided basically to continue its, uh, its monetary policy. Now, re recently, it lowered it even further from A-plus to A, and that was due to the fears of the U.S. long-term ability to pay our debt. Now, you got to compare this to the the big three credit rating agencies, which is Fitch, I'm sorry, Fitch, F-I-T-C-H, Standard and Poor's, and Moody's, and they left our credit rating at AAA, even though the United States is in trouble. Um, now, I also want to quote Dagong's chairman, and he says, The squabbling between the two political parties on raising U.S. debt ceiling reflected an irreversible trend on the United States' declining ability to repay its debt. The two parties acted in a very irresponsible way, and their actions greatly exposed the negative impact of the U.S. political system on its economic fundamentals. Um, and you got to remember, China is the largest, is the largest foreign owner of U.S. debt, at approximately 1.2 trillion. So to say they don't have influence, well, that's not right. Now, little information you should consider about the uh, Dagon Credit Global Credit Rating. It, it was founded in 1994. It rates about 67 countries, and it attempted to become to become a recognized rating agency in the United States along with the Big Three, but. Basically, the government said, "No, you can't. We're not going to recognize you simply because we can't control how you're going to rate it. Um, because you're in China, we're in the United States, it isn't going to work out." That's very ironic because the big three U.S. credit rating agencies—they're in Europe, they're in other locations throughout the world—but yet we couldn't let this work. Anyway, neither here nor there. Now let's talk about silver. Um, and how this relates to Russia and how this relates to China. Typically, but not, but not always, when the stock market goes up, the price of silver goes down. Now, t t today we saw when the Dow took a hit uh, over 500 points, actually silver went down. At one time it was down over $3 an ounce. It, it rebounded uh, somewhat decently, though, later in the day. Um, so when that happens that can that can lead to speculation that the silver market I is being manipulated and that's creating some of the volatility now let's talk about why i think it might be manipulated or you could i guess theorize why it is and that the rumor is that slv that's iShares silver trust slv is iShares silver trust and, and they trade in precious metal commodities um, they don't have the silver that they claim to have on paper. So what that means is, if you own a share of S SLV, 
uh, basically you can exchange that for X amount of silver. Well, there's more paper out there than silver. So if SLV was ever called upon to produce the silver based on the paper, it wouldn't be able to do that. So that creates some of the volatility in the market. However, with that said, you should still buy silver, and I'm going to give you some reasons why. Here's why. On Friday, July 22nd, the, to, uh, I'm sorry, 2011, the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange started trading dollar-denominated silver future contracts. And basically, um, they're trying to tap into the, the, tap into the demand that China and India uh, now has for silver. In other words, they want to be exposed more and more to silver. They want to buy silver. And the exchange, they're also going to roll out a, a yen, price, gold, and silver futures to capitalize once again on the growing silver investor demand. So, you know what? That ends the United States monopoly on silver. Now that you've got China and India involved and the demand has become significantly higher, we're not the number one um, silver holder, nor can we control it anymore. And basically, the, with China now in the silver market, it allows them to trade with their counterparts throughout the world and it becomes the first time that Asians can actually buy silver and actually have the physical silver in their presence. Now, let's circle back to iShares and, and talk about um, how the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange might be an issue uh, with iShares Silver Trust. If that's true, then, then SLV or iShares is definitely not going to have the silver that they claim to have on paper. In other words, all that paper is for X amount of shares there's not they don't have physically the amount of silver to cover all that shares and now that you have China India and um, also Russia involved it becomes a much much more complicated and who knows um, read an article where it said maybe they'll, they'll be part of a fraud investigation so in short Russia and China are two biggest holders of debt have limited to no faith in our dollar uh, the US is no longer a biggest biggest player in the silver market China is in there now, and as India grows, we're going to only become smaller. So what does all this mean? It means basically d the demand for silver is going to continue to increase. The faith in the U.S. dollar will continue to decrease, and U.S. durable goods and commodities will continue to rise. And what I mean by that is everything you buy um, is going to continue to rise. For example, in March, I bought white gasoline I used for one of our stoves. I bought it at Walmart for about $7 a gallon. You go now, and it's about $11, no, 10, 10 something a gallon, almost 11 And that's all within the same year. Now, the question you have to ask is, where do you want your dollars to go? In the bank where it loses value? Or in silver, where the future is extremely positive? So I know we've had a little volatility uh, this month, but silver has continued to climb in value despite the volatility. So, I'd be interested in your comments. This is Zion Prepper signing out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message. Thank you.